They were pretty intense. Um, the FBI, obviously, he's a he's a, a probably what they consider a pretty serious asset. He he's he's a Muslim American. He speaks Arabic, and um, and he has the experience to do these kind of operations. So um, they wanted to be really really clear that his identity would be kept private and secret. Um, because he's been doing this for a lot of years and I'm sure there's a lot of people who'd like to know what he really looks like and he wants to keep doing this because he's he's good at it and and he's has the training and the experience and the background to pull it off. Well I can tell you that there was uh, some pretty serious efforts made for us not to meet him or accidentally meet him. Um, he had to stay on a different floor of the hotel than us. He had to be booked under a, a false name. I wasn't allowed to be in the lobby when he checked in. They, they wanted to be really, really careful that there wasn't an accidental meeting because it, his identity is so sensitive around this. The biggest one was for him to appear on camera, he needed to look nothing like his real self. So um, there was a lot of back and forth on how we were, to, we were gonna do that. In the end, we settled on a sort of a Hollywood style prosthetic makeup process that actually took five hours to install. Um, he had to sort of go to the makeup company before the interview several hours before and have it, have it put in place. And when he arrived, he actually allowed me to touch his face. And um, it sort of moved like a piece of rubber on his face. It was, but when you look at it, when you see it on TV, you'd never know there's a, there's a person underneath that face that looks nothing like the face. He said he looked in the mirror and, and he had no idea who was staring back at him. So if you could even fool the person looking in the mirror, you know you're going to fool people watching the TV show. And this was important. This was really, really important to everybody that his identity not get compromised. We, obviously, we don't use his real name in the story um, because that's a secret. We, we don't refer to where he lives or whether he has family. There's no personal details. That was really important. And we alter his voice as well because, again, he needs to continue to be able to work. What's interesting about the story that we get to tell is it takes place in so many different cities and locations and, and, and situations around the world, really Canada and the world, that it gave us a real opportunity to kind of bring it to life. Um, but again, we had to be mindful of the fact that when we're representing him on television that he doesn't, what we're showing doesn't look like anything that someone might think they recognize. So it's all, you know, we're very careful not to show a face or not to show a, a, a real shape of a head. We had to be very sort of impressionistic in the way that we, we visualize this and the way that we bring it to life. And the other thing we can say is that um, because he's written a book and he goes into a lot of detail in terms of how this was actually pulled off, how this work was pulled off, it really gave us an opportunity to bring it to life because we had those details in the book. We were able to work from the book and almost make a small movie about his life because we just had so much to work with in terms of what had happened and where it happened and how it happened and um, we think it brings it to life. I mean I've obviously been into situations where we have to put people in shadow or where their you know where their employment may be at risk but this is a situation where his life is at risk. It's the, if the wrong person figures out what he really looks like or where he really lives he could be killed so the stakes had never been higher.